The annual spawning migration of the snapper into Port Phillip Bay is something that I think everyone has to experience at least once in their lifetime. I know that I've heard a lot about this fishery and I, I do chase snapper up and down the coast a lot, but to get the chance to come to Port Phillip Bay and get stuck into spawn time snapper was an opportunity I definitely wasn't going to pass up. Now the weather pattern we're in now, Trav, we've had rough weather for about a week and the fish, fish have moved in big westerlies and it's going to go to a strong northerly tomorrow so this is this small window when you reckon they're going to bite. Port Phillip Bay is a unique fishery. It's a fairly small entrance to this bay then opens out into this massive waterway which Melbourne sits around. At certain times of the year when that water temperature gets to about 18, 19 degrees, a whole truckload of snapper pour into this bay and the local anglers take advantage of what we call snapper spawning fever. First part of this little process, lie your jig head alongside your plastic and it'll tell you exactly where hook has to breach it. Then we want to rig the point of that hook into the face of the soft plastic, like so. Run it, just like threading a worm onto a hook, to the point where you designated that that hook had to come out of the soft plastic. And then we shove it over that little rib bit on the, the head of the jig head, which is the keeper. Excuse my torn plastic, it's been chewed on by a fish, but that's all good. That's the benefit of soft plastics, you can use them twice. At the end of that though, we've got a soft plastic bill. It's rigged all nice and straight, it's going to swim like an injured bait fish. It's going to make it that little bit more attractive to local fish. Mix, Same it, size. mix, mix and match. Colours, mix and match. Colours is a big thing. I know a lot yeah. of guys, they like to have a natural colour and they like to have you know, that nice funky colour. Bill, you're a bit of a funky kind of guy. I know you like the bright I stuff in the tackle that, box. We'll give this a go, see what's going to work best. Right. I'm just going to use a uh, same thing, quarter inch jig, uh, jig head. Uh, 3 0 size hook, but just a round jig head on this, this one because I'm going to fish it right down near the bottom. A big part of catching snapper on Port Phillip Bay is to first find those critters. Get out on the water, maybe get some good advice from some local mates, but then use your sound and try and sound out that water to find where those fish might be. Having found them, it's a case then of anchoring up or drifting across those zones and using a mixture of burly or lure techniques to catch them. It's interesting, Travis, that like, for me on my sander and some of, you know, some of the waters I'd fish, I'd quite often see that as a bit of bait, but you know your sand and you know this ground. That for you smells snapper? Yeah, it's definitely snapper. Now that was really interesting. That hit like four or five times then. Yeah? The little tap spill. Yep. Sneaky, eh? Especially on this sort of gear. They look at, they're probably not that big, Bill, but you, oh. you come out with spaghetti rods. Yeah. Oh, that's a bit of a sneaky way to hook them, Bill. You can probably see why that soft plastic's working too. The lure of the snapper, the Port Phillip Bay snapper. Sorry, mate. That's, that's all right, mate. Hard to find good help these days. There you go, we're subtly fishing soft plastics down the Burley Trail. And it's a great way to fish a bait. It's also a great way to fish a soft plastic. There's a seven inch soft plastic, lightly weighted jig head. And there's the result. I'll get this guy back in the water, so I might need to be offering some help in the background. All right, mate. See ya! Off they go. Fantastic stuff. Having fished soft plastics right up and down the coastline for snapper, I was really keen to come down and see just how well a few different retrieves might work on the local spawning snapper. Now that was the dead, just dead sticking that plastic, Bill. So Yeah, purposely dead sticked it. Oh, as I said, using that yep. quarter ounce round, head, round jig head, yep. ball, ball jig head. Dead stick it down the bottom, cast it well out the back. It's a nice thing if you are fishing a burly trail with soft plastics, sometimes get your soft plastic to look exactly like a piece of the burly trail. So send it out there and let it flutter down just like a piece of that burly trail. Well, that's why everyone goes fishing for snapper, those sort of screaming runs, screaming oh, reels. There's a lot to like about them. And you're using such nice like you're on it, Bill, you're enjoying the fight from way to go. Yeah. And you're not fighting any gear. Yeah. Again, only about three kilos. Only about three kilos. Tell the uh, it was getting a bit fussy. Yeah, it's only three kilos. A lot of people would be absolutely wrapped with a soft plastic caught three kilo snapper. Okay, and look at that. Magnificent. Now you've got you're obviously using. Yeah, who a good... would think it would go that hard that long? Eh? <laughs> and come to the surface. I thought it was going to yeah, jump. And it's not surface. certainly not foul all. No, it's just, just engulfed that soft plastic. He's gone and eaten it. Yeah. Beautifully. Now we're fishing. At the moment we're fishing an afternoon. The sun's starting to get a little bit lower in the sky and it's a turn of a tide, which is pretty peak snapper bite times. A lot of the snapper guys are out yeah. very much at this time of day for that. Lower light, tide turn, burling up, but fishing plastics in amongst that burly trail, producing the goods. It's getting That's back, right. eh? Aren't they a magnificent looking fish? 
see why a lot of us get pretty excited about catching these guys. They're spectacular to look at. They fight like troopers and they're wonderful to eat. And fisheries like this, particularly at spawn time when the fish are chewing hard and you can catch a lot of them, it's very nice to let, let your fair share go so that they come back the next year, particularly in fisheries like the Port Bay, where it's really nice to see them again the next year. My turn, I think. If you go to your tackle store these days, you'll see lots of different kinds and shapes and so sizes of soft plastic. You've seen us now rig up a seven inch plastic. Sometimes it helps a lot to experiment with slightly different size soft plastics and on different days, can be the catalyst to really catching some good fish. I've gone down to a, a four inch size plastic and this one's also got a nice little curly tail which gives it a little bit more action in the water. Which sometimes can be the difference between a, a fish getting agitated and eating this. I've rigged it up exactly the same way. Slightly different bait. We're gonna fish it very much the same way. Hopefully inspire an aggressive result down there. Using a very simple outfit to target snapper on Port Phillip Bay on plastics at the moment. Using a seven foot spin rod and a 10 to 17 pound weight range. It's got a plenty of lower end strength, but it's quite nice and tippy up the top, which lets me work it just in a lot of different ways. Nice light outfit. It's matched with a, a similar size reel that's loaded with a six pound braid. You've seen the jig head and the soft plastic. How much simpler can it be, Bill? Matey, great minds must think alike because I'm using exactly the same outfit. <laughs> Fancy that. <laughs> I wonder why that drag screaming is so much. It's because I've got a, a nice light line class on and I don't want to go too hard on this fish. They throw a lot of head shakes at you and I really want to soften that up. And let him use the drag and, and that rod as a shock absorber. Oh, you've got to love that run of a snapper. You never get tired of these pink bumpy headed guys grabbing stuff and charging off. Travis to the rescue. I'd say he's probably the best fish of the day. Fantastic. Amongst all those baits, mate, he came and ate a little uh, soft plastic. There we go. Results. Results of a soft plastic just gently hopped on the bottom and a change in soft plastic size. I'm a big, big fan of that brown pumpkin seed colour. This is a four inch jig and grub on a quarter ounce jig head. And this guy's cruising the bottom. He's been stirred up by all that burly Travis has thrown out. And this thing obviously caught his attention and it hopped enough to annoy him. He's gone along and gone, I'll have you. I waited for the rod to load up and away we go. Oh, I love catching these things. I'm gonna get him back in the water. Just hopping a plastic in amongst all these bait rods. There's plenty of burly out there. We just keep tickling along the bottom. Sooner or later, we know the fish are down there. It's a fair chance we're gonna get the interest of one of these local snapper. Here we go, just got to let them load up when they grab it, and... Oh yeah! Like we planned it. The light's starting to get a little bit low and it can often be exciting fishing when you combine those low light periods with the turn of the tide. The fish can really get active. If you're out there fishing in your spot at that time, you can usually get some drags turning and sounding like they are now. Oh yeah. Beautiful. There's results of just gently hopping that plastic on the bottom. Skipper Travis has put us onto the fish. Burled them up for us. We've had a whole lot of fun. Now the bait boys have got into them, but so too have the plastic guys. Just shows you there's lots of ways to skin a cat. It's Bill Classen here from The Fishing Show, and if you like this instructional video and want to learn more, it's simple. Go to fishingshowtv.com.au and see a whole host of additional videos.